This is episode number 184 of the Mixology Talk podcast, and we're just now finishing off Smoke Month. Uh, and what better way to do that than to talk about a really beautiful, smoky spirit, and that is Mezcal. So we're going to learn a little bit about Mezcal from founder and CEO of Izo Mezcal, Gaston Martinez, and he's going to give us some insights and uh, tells us what brings that smoky flavor to the beverage. Cheers. So today we have uh, an expert, um, a founder of a Mezcal company to talk about Mezcal and really focus on kind of some of the smoky elements that it brings, some of the history um, and some facts that we probably don't know about Mezcal. So uh, thank you, Gaston Martinez from Izo Mezcal for joining us. Thank you. Happy to be here. Excellent. So can you tell us a little bit about um, your company and some of the spirits that you guys produce? Yes, of course. Uh, it's all agave uh, spirits is the name of our company and it's all is the name of our product. Uh, we're based in Durango, Mexico. Uh, this is up north of Mexico. And when you talk about mezcal, most of the times people will refer Oaxaca is the more popular area. Uh, but uh, don't get me wrong, we've been doing mezcal for both of those regions close to 500 years, right? The very uh, it has a lot of history and tradition behind uh, this type of uh, spirit. Uh, in, in because we are in, in the Durango region, we also can produce uh, another um, spirit. It's called Sotol. And then from that, we create different kind of uh, um, products. An ensemble. An ensemble is a blend of two agaves. Uh, creates, in Durango, we have close to uh, uh, probably 20. That, but mostly we use 10 agaves for, for uh, our um, mezcal. Mm-hmm. And we blend in the agave cenizo, that is the most popular agave. It's called Durango, agave duranguensis, the, the scientific name. And also lamparillo. Uh, and then we blend those two and we create this wonderful blend. We cook it together and, and we create a nice synergy, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful product. And then we also age um, or rest uh, our mezcal in an American oak barrel, brand new. And we create a uh, wonderful um, uh, rested uh, mezcal, a reposado, and is uh, we're working also on the um, aging uh, mezcal añejo that will come back um, into the market next year. Excellent. So um, now let's talk about the category of mezcal. Mm-hmm. Um, what exactly is mezcal? Well, let's 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 start with that. Mezcal, the word mezcal, it means roasted agave or cooked agave, right? I mean, when you put that in consideration. All the products that are made with agave in Mexico, they are mezcals, even tequila, right? Obviously, that was back in the days. Uh, I mean, uh, and now tequila find out like, okay, let's, let's just do our own little thing and we will, we'll use blue agave and we call it tequila, right? But the word mezcal as, 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 as a word is just roasted agave. Uh, um, in mezcal, you, you have nine different regions that actually can produce mezcal, and they can call it mezcal. Uh, and, and in top of that, you have close to probably 60 different type of barrels of agave. Depends on the region, is your agave. This is very similar as, as a wine, the wine industry, right? I mean, you have your, your region, you have your type of grapes, and then in mezcal, you have your region, and you have your type of agaves. Uh, and our, our, our kind of connection with the mezcal is just the, 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 the process of the agave roasted underneath and a fire pit with the wood and all that. This is pretty amazing. Excellent. And then, so um, can you give us a little bit of a brief overview of how you go about actually producing this? Like from the agave, how do you kind of go through that process kind of to yeah. model? Phenomenal. Yes. Uh, one of the things, you know, that I mean, people need to realize, and especially in our company, we're not just another, I mean, brand or label or, or, or label. We actually uh, own the distillery. We actually harvest the agave. We take care from, from the harvesting to the promotion to the bottling to everything that is involved. Uh, we have a Jimedores that actually will look for the uh, uh, agave that is ready. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it takes between eight to 10 years to be able to be harvested, right? It's a long process. And uh, we use only wild agave. That means, you know, our hemodotes go to the mountain, they take, you know, a week or so, and then they bring back 
uh, the, the patch of agaves, and then we, we go through the process. We, we actually uh, process the agave. We cook the agave in a, in a volcanic fire pit. That means, you know, uh, we have a nearby a volcanic, we have these volcanic rocks that we cover the fire pit to kind of preserve the heat of uh, the wood that we're actually using. We only use uh, oak wood. Um, and other companies, they, I heard they use mesquite and all that, but they, that creates some different type of a smoke effect on, on, on your product. We only use dead wood that we find. I mean, we don't cut the trees, anything like that. We're actually very conscious of, uh, you know, how to be good, I mean, you know, environmental, uh, I mean, way to, to just respect nature, right? But uh, we, we bring the agave, we harvest, and then we cook it. We chop it in sometimes two or three parts, and then uh, we put the um, oak wood in the fire pit, and then we throw on top a volcanic rock. Then we let the kind of fire go, so, I mean, takes away, and then uh, the heat will stay in the, in, the, in the volcanic rock, and then we put the uh, agaves on top. We cover with the leftover fiber. You know, when we grind our agave, I mean, the fiber comes and separates from the juice, from the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the fiber of the agave. And then we cover that on top of the agave when we cook it, and then we cover it with a blanket, 100% cotton, and then we put dirt on top, and we let it sit between four and five days. That means that we're steaming, we're, we're cooking, right, with the, with the steam of the, of the fire and all that, you know, creates a nice smoky effect that will go into the guts of the agave hearts. It's pretty amazing. Excellent. So I imagine um, since you are kind of essentially creating this big earthen oven, um, mm -hmm. you still have the oak in there, you're kind of covering it with volcanic rock to insulate it basically keep all that heat in yeah, yeah. i imagine that that is where a lot of the smoke element of mezcal comes from is there's yes. nowhere for this smoke to go so it kind of just gets permeated right into the agave itself it's like a, when you have a smoker in your house right mm -hmm. and then you're going to do your cook and then you're going to do your roast beef right you're going to smoke that for 10 hours 15 hours 30 hours you let it cook with the smoke and that's kind of it, right? I mean, we kind of like uh, let the smoke, the heat, the flavors of, of the wood get into the insides of the agave heart, and that creates, uh, I mean, the the nice connection of the smoking. Uh, uh, we 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 I, I like the smoke part in in our mezcal, um, but I don't want to be overwhelmed or overpowering because sometimes you find mezcals that actually you just takes away the rest, and it just tastes the smoke. And for some pilots, fine, perfect. But for, for our way to do a, I mean, our profile, we want to integrate the smoke in the rest of the elements of the mezcal. That's, that's the way that we create this profile. Excellent. Yeah, and I, um, I assume everybody that's listening to this podcast um, is fairly knowledgeable, has probably had mezcal. Um, but if you haven't, I highly recommend trying it. Um, you make a fantastic product. And uh, I think that, um, you know, it really is a very interesting spirit. It's very different from anything else on the market. Um, so do yourself a favor, pick up a bottle, and I think you're going to really enjoy um, Mezcal as a spirit. I think it's a, a one of my favorite styles of spirit out there for sure. Um, so what are, um, as, as far as categories of Mezcal, um, are there some very common, we talked about tequila, um, mm -hmm. and we talked about Bacanora and Sotal, but within, um, within that, are there specific kind of styles of mezcal um, that exist out there? Well, yeah, I mean, the, we, we talk about the, the ensemble, right? When, uh, when you blend those, those uh, type of agaves and create one, one spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in mezcal, the beauty of mezcal is uh, depends on the region. Uh, will be kind of a, uh, also the connection of how the profile of the uh, spirit will be. Depends on of the distillery, right? I mean, uh, they everybody has its own style. It's, I mean, pretty related with wine, right? I mean, Cabernet Sauvignon doesn't taste the same bottle to bottle, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of you got the same principle, right? Robust, full full body, and all that. And mezcal is kind of the same thing. Uh, uh, in 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 a way, mezcal uh, by by its own, you know, you can have fifty different type of mezcals because you have fifty type of uh, agaves. And then you have agaves that are rare to, to find, you know, or more elaborate to harvest. 
there are agaves that are more common, like uh, Espadin from Oaxaca. It's your very intro product. I mean, it's, it does have, a, in my opinion, the profile is not as big as our Ceniso because it's a different plant, different region. We do Highland, you know, that creates a little bit of more uh, on the sweetness. I mean, you will actually, when you see our product, you get that sweetness at the end that connects how the flavor of the, 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 the agave is translated to the product because of the sugars and all that. And, and then, uh, uh, but yeah, definitely mezcal is, is the most complex spirit that is in the market right now. I mean, nobody else can come close what what we uh, are doing. That's why when you are, uh, you know, any vodka or, or even whiskey or rum, and then you, you go and, you know, push yourself and, and try this type of products, and you see how complex they are. And the layer of flavors they give to you, like, uh, you're like, a, whoa, whoa. I mean, obviously, I would recommend try to drink it neat, straight, maybe on ice, and you get all the flavors. But, uh, I mean, it uh, depends on what you're looking for. It, it just depends on the day, the time of the year. I mean, you can throw a cocktail and also it will be amazing. Yeah, and so um, one of the things I want to touch upon is um, Mezcal has a very long tradition. Um, it's been handed down from father to son in many cases in these tiny villages all across Mexico. Um, mm -hmm. So are there like more traditional ways of drinking Mezcal? Yeah, I mean, in Mexico, most of the people, I would say 90% of the people that actually drink Mezcal, they drink it straight. They drink it, I mean, just need, you know. They might do like a slice, a slice of orange, you know. And uh, I've seen people do a little bit of tajin, you know, on the side, just to, you know, get that kind of connection with the, with the flavor of the fruit and the spiciness of the tajin. But in my uh, personal connection with the spirit, you know, on ice, if it's really hot, you just pour it and that's it. Uh, that's kind of a, the, the Mexico style of drinking mezcal, the connection with the drinkers. Here in the U.S., I mean, the a mixologist uh, and cocktails and bars, I mean, they're bringing different expression on, on the whole uh, spirit. Uh, I mean, I strongly believe that, you know, when you do the right mix of, uh, you know, flavors and, 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 uh, and, and, you know, base of cocktails for uh, these particular spirits, you will bring greater flavors. Right. In some cases, you know, the smoke will come more present on, on, on your cocktail. And, and that's pretty neat. I mean, the, I guess you have to find what you're looking, what you like, and then kind of adapt in that. Uh, but uh, either cocktail, uh, I mean, depends on who you I mean, if you, have, if you have sweet tooth, hey, go for something sweet and then you're going to like it. Right. But uh, I would strongly suggest, you know, drinking neat if you can. I mean, just sip it. You can get that connection and flavors and all that. Let the mezcal, you know, take you and, and you know, get that expression on your palate of, you know, all the things behind that little sip of mezcal you just had, you know, the 10 years in the making and the region and the process and all that. Pretty yeah, cool. absolutely. And I, I think it's one of those things that, um, you know, there's a lot of information. Uh, we talked about this earlier off camera, but um, there's a lot of information about mezcal, but I think, one of the things that um, I was amazed about is just how long this tradition of mezcal production has been going on. And mm -hmm. kind of, we talked about artisanal spirits in this, you know, in this new kind of age of mixology. But if we want to really talk about artisanal spirits, I mean, mezcal is kind of like the, the epitome of this, where every region has their own style, every village has their own producers, and those producers have probably been doing it for, for generation, yeah, no, for sure, yeah. I mean, it's 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 very eclectic and very intrigue and and you know uh, the passion and and uh, especially uh, for me, you know, when when uh, I started this company, one of my goals was kind of like, a, let me try to bring our way to celebrate and bring our way to I mean our tradition to 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 the part of different parts of the world and and uh, that was pretty neat. I mean. Uh, uh, the passion, the tradition, the, the history behind uh, mezcal is like no, no other. Sure, absolutely. So we kind of touched upon some of the traditional ways of drinking mezcal. Uh, you mentioned just kind of sipping it, maybe ice, maybe a little slice of orange and um, mm. even some tahini. Uh, but I imagine that you've had your product in probably every combination of cocktail uh, <laughs> under the planet. 
I so I'd love to, to <laughs> yeah, I'd love to talk to you about um, some of the best ways that you, some of the best cocktails you've had that um, really showcase mezcal. Um, so if you don't mind telling us some, some great cocktails. No, no, I, I have few that I can, you know, Negroni with mezcal. Mm, oh boy. I mean, Negroni will be, you know, like uh, old fashioned. Believe it or not, old fashioned, you can do a phenomenal old fashioned with mezcal. Uh, one of the ones I like when the day is kind of hot and, and, you know, skinny margarita, you know, oh. simple skinny margarita. And uh, I throw some spice if, if uh, I mean, if they can do that, you know, maybe uh, because I like spice in it, you know, a slice of uh, saran or something like that, just to create that hint of, uh, oh my God, this is so nice. And uh, uh, Carajillo, Carajillo is uh, like, uh, uh, like Irish coffee from Mexico, right? I mean, it's a, a coffee base, uh, I mean, drink, and then you have a, a liqueur added and then also uh, you add the mezcal in, in the process, carajillo. Oh boy, I mean, if you re- I mean, if you're like 11 o'clock at night and you want to wake up, coffee and mezcal. Don't get me wrong. I mean, <laughs> I'm writing all these down. <laughs> <laughs> carajillo. It's called carajillo. Uh, it's liqueur of uh, 43, and then okay. uh, also you add uh, a mezcal, uh, and it's just. Mm. That I mean, sounds amazing. Those, those, yeah, those, those are, I mean, uh, uh, there's a restaurant and, and I'm here in San Diego. They do uh, a cucumber margarita that is just like uh, refreshing, you know. Uh, I don't know, probably you, you have those uh, uh, cucumber waters that they uh, serve you in restaurants, you know, that mm-hmm. give that kind of flavor. The cucumber is kind of refreshing, kind of like that. But you add on a cocktail and a margarita and then uh, the, the mezcal. Oh, boy. Yeah, they all sound great. I know one of my... Uh, you know, then you're like a... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know one of the ones that I keep getting uh, that comes up on my radar is there's a cocktail called The Last Word. Um, and it's gin, green chartreuse, um, maraschino, and lime juice. Um, and a lot of people take um, the gin out and put mezcal. So it's like a really smoky, really intricate, layered cocktail. Um, that's what I keep uh, meaning to try, but I've heard really good things about that. But now I have <laughs> a new hit list of uh, mezcal cocktails I need to try. But if, if you cocktail, you call it the last word. It's like uh, maybe that, that, that's it, right? I mean, you take that and you have to go home. because. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more for me. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, actually, that, it's probably that, and then have one of your uh, your coffee cocktails after that to so <laughs> work back up. <laughs> well, I mean, there is some regions in Mexico that uh, in the morning you you have your coffee and they just throw a splash of mezcal. Oh, interesting. And it gives like a nice sort of. I mean, it kind of, kind of wakes wake you up. I mean, just a splash, but uh, you know, then you imagine if you start your day like this, right? Like uh, I'm having my coffee with a splash of mezcal. Wow, that would be interesting, right? That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. A little, little espresso with some mess. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Just like a boom. Just a throw. <laughs> no, I mean, this, the beauty of mezcal because of the layer of flavors and all that, I mean, the, it, it is very diverse and it can really blend with uh, so many different type of, uh, I mean, the base of cocktails, right? I mean, the, uh, I would suggest, you know, if you have a really, you know, you, you have your cocktail that you really like, Switch whatever you have in, in that cocktail and adjust and then put mezcal, and and uh, it, it will it will show you how you know great this uh, profile of uh, this type of spirit is. Excellent. And then um, so I I imagine there's a lot of myths about mezcal out there. Um, you know you probably have heard them all, um, but is there something that you wish everybody knew more about with mezcal? Is there one particular thing that you would I think, you know, the, the, the harvesting, you know, how long it takes to get ready those agave hearts, you know, for process. Uh, I mean, uh, we are, probably you heard that instant gratification. We want everything to be right away, right now, and, you know, I just want it, right? And, and in this call, you have to kind of take your time. I mean, uh, we talk about off, off camera saying like, uh, yeah, you want to, uh, you know, try little potatoes to do vodka or, and how many you want, right? Yeah, tomorrow you, it can be there. And in this call, it's a different story. Uh, uh, and, and then when you understand that and, and you realize, you know, everything that is behind that bottle of uh, mezcal that you're opening or you're drinking, 
you know, you, you, you tend to appreciate more. I mean, the, all the labor, it's a very labor intense, I mean, process, you know, the cooking, the fermentation, the distillation, the bottling. We, we hand apply our labels. Uh, I don't know, if it, I mean, the, even the, the stopper, you know, I mean, this is a real onyx, handmade. Uh, every bottle is unique. We, we don't, uh, I mean, we try to make it, uh, I mean, as, as unique as possible. But uh, every, every, every single, I mean, stopper is, is unique, is different. And then you have a different bottle, a unique bottle, right? And uh, 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 things like that, I mean, that uh, we create this beautiful label uh, and, you know, try to really, I mean, make people appreciate everything behind, you know, uh, our, our you know, spirit. Uh, make sure that you understand, you know, even though it, it looks very simple, I mean, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, information behind our product, our label, our company. It's pretty neat. But that would be one. I mean, uh, be sure to know that, you know, it takes 10 years to harvest these agaves. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, one thing to just keep in mind is, you know, as the demand for mezcal goes up across the board, I think everybody in a cocktail bar has at least one mezcal cocktail on their on their list, or they did before COVID. Um, it's really important to keep that in mind because 20 years ago, nobody planted more wild agave. So what we have yeah. is kind of what we have. So, you know, being respectful of kind of where this all started and how it, how the production process um moves forward on a natural side of things, um, no. you know, it, it's, it's something that we should all keep in mind as, as demand for mezcal grows for sure. No, no, and we're conscious about that. And we, we're bringing back, I mean, we're replanting agaves and, and uh, back to the wild. I mean, uh, we, we don't want to, you know, farm it. Mm -hmm. just, we just grow it. And when they're two years old, we bring it back to, to the wild and then let nature do the, the magic. I mean, it's very simple when I explain when you have a, a farm uh, agave or farm anything, farm berry or wild berry, have both and taste it. And you'll see what we're talking about, right? Farm sure. strawberry or, or wild strawberries. I mean, when you eat any of the wild berries or strawberries and then you're like a wow, I mean, I'm, this is the expect, spectrum of flavor is just beyond. Uh, because we are now used to have like uh, the farm or, or I mean, and that's, that's still good, but I mean, it doesn't compare with nature, right? You can't compete with nature. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's funny how many parallels um, are with agave and, and wine, because I know with wine as well, uh, you really want those vines to kind of struggle a little bit, you know, and it's the struggle that brings the health of the plant that brings all these incredible flavors that you're not going to get from other places so well in, in europe i mean they don't they don't irrigate the the vines you know they, they let it struggle they let it like uh, go deep i mean trying to find that moist and and then you will get less production but the wine will be outstanding and in this part of the world i mean we irrigate and we do all that because we want sometimes more production mm -hmm. i mean I'm, I'm not generalizing everything but if you let nature do the thing you know in Europe, it's just, they, they'll do their thing. The vines will go, I mean, the, uh, the roots will just go deep and try to find that kind of uh, moist and, and get that. The more stressed the vine, the better the wine. Absolutely, yeah. The thing with, with the agave, I mean, agave needs to be there, you know, probably sometimes it's in between rocks, but you know, oof, that will give you the best agave. Nice, excellent. And so I have one last question for you. Um, and this is kind of more along the lines of your memories of, of mezcal. Um, as you kind of look, up, you know, upon your history of mezcal, being introduced to it, you know, whenever you were up to producing and owning your own company, what is one memory uh, that you absolutely love around that is centered around mezcal? I mean, you mean for uh, for uh, the kind of to make me be a produce, I mean, be part of the mezcal company or? Yeah, um, like what, what is, like when you think about mezcal, what is one of the happiest memories you have about that? Yeah, it's, it's always celebration, you know, it's, it's always that, that the camaraderie. I mean, it's always kind of like, uh, especially from, from Mexico, we just take any opportunity to open a bottle of mezcal and uh, celebrate, right? But, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of uh, the, the joy and the happiness behind that. I mean, the, 
uh, it's always been part of a, you know, let's celebrate, let's have a drink, let's, let's uh, share with friends and family, you know, I mean, the, what we are going through life, but I mean, in, in a really cool way. Uh, uh, for me, if I think about Mescal, I think about that, you know, I mean, celebration, happiness, uh, uh, I mean, joy, family, uh, friends, and, and that's, that's, that's pretty unique. I mean, uh, and, and yeah, me being involved in that and be able to sometimes bring you that little element that will actually be part of your celebration, right? Uh, maybe people will buy this and they, they gift it, right? Oh, and they were, oh my God, this is one of the great gifts. And in life, uh, we always, we always, we're only going to take uh, memories, right? The rest is going to be gone. And uh, we want good memories, and that's it. I mean, I think the, the mezcal uh, or, or what we're trying to do here is, hey, let me be part of this uh, celebration in your life and, uh, and uh, help you out a little bit. Very cool. I love it. Um, so you've answered all our questions, uh, and I, I cannot thank you enough. I think um, you know, the more people I could get introduced into what it means to produce mezcal and the complexity and all that, I think more people will, will absolutely enjoy it. Um, so thank you very much for that. And then, um, that being said, I, we kind of touched a little bit on this in the beginning, but is there anything that you have coming out or anything you want to promote on your end? Um, because we'd love to kind of celebrate that as well. For sure. I mean, uh, <laughs> we're, we're launching, uh, when we took this opportunity, uh, when, as soon as, um, you know, COVID hit, uh, the world, uh, we were on the process of bringing you, uh, spirits uh, on a, a part of our family. Uh, we start with our, our single product, you know, the Mezcal Joven, and then uh, we add in uh, Sotol, we add in uh, uh, Bacanora, we add in uh, an Ensemble, that is uh, the, the two blends of agave, uh, we add in Reposado, and also we add in Tequila Extrañejo Cristalino. Uh, we are becoming, you know, one of the few uh, companies that will give you all the spectrum of agave spirits from Mexico, right? And we choose the tequila cristalino because they're very unique. I don't know if you're familiar with the term cristalino. This is a three-year-old age tequila, but it goes through a, a process of a carbon uh, a filter. It takes the color away. And then it's a clear uh, tequila, but it's been uh, aged. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty nice. But yeah, I mean, uh, we um, will we'll update our website. If people want to know more about uh, I mean, our company, I mean, isomescal.com. Uh, if you have viewers, we can also throw some, uh, you know, special uh, discount. If they want to try our product, they can order online. Uh, I have a um, nice uh, discount code uh, they can use. Uh, it's it's ISOFAM20, I-Z-O-F-A-M-20, uh, for 20% discount. And you can go online and then uh, give it a try, right? I mean, it's always nice to, to I mean, this is a great talking, right? But I mean, now people are going to be like, uh, where can I get this one, right? I mean, uh, and uh, it's a perfect uh, timing that uh, you want to order and, you know, create some cocktails at home and, and or whatever you, you are. Perfect. Excellent. Well, we'll definitely have links uh, to the website um, in the show notes. So we'll definitely include those. But uh, once again, Gaston, I can't thank you enough. And you. Uh, I'm excited to try some of these cocktails, man. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. And I will do this anytime you want. Cheers. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. So once again, thank you to Gaston Martinez for uh, telling us more about that beautiful spirit, Mezcal, and offering a lot of insights as well. So we're gonna have some more podcasts for you guys in the future, but until then, I hope you guys are staying safe and having a few good cocktails along the way. Cheers. <laughs>